Michael the Beetle here, and I belong to the genus Blapsteinus, or do I? But first, what is a genus? We live in a complex world that can be difficult to make sense of. Long after animals diversified during the Cambrian explosion more than 500 million years ago, we are gifted with a dizzying amount of biodiversity. Now hold on tight to your exoskeletons, because here comes a fact that will blow your tiny beetle minds. The order Coleoptera, also known as the beetle squad, boasts about 350,000 described species, and that's just scratching the tip of the entomological iceberg. Countless more species are waiting to be discovered, named, or maybe even get their own reality TV show. According to a 2019 CNBC Make It article written by Sam Dogan, 350,000 or more is also the number of dollars per year one needs to make to raise a family in a major coastal city like San Francisco or New York. But wait, there's more to San Francisco than meets the compound eye. It's not just a city. It's also a county with a name that pays homage to one of my all-time favorite saints, St. Francis of Assisi, who was declared the patron saint of ecology by Pope John Paul II in 1979. Born in 1181 or 1182 in the town of Assisi, Italy, he sought to follow the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ and to walk in his footsteps. Also, he truly knew how to appreciate nature and called fellow critters his brothers and sisters. One story even mentions that he preached to the birds. Birds are an everlasting part of Anglophone meme culture. The biggest bird, red bird laughing then staring, Terence from Angry Birds staring, Shoebill Stork, Burbs, Bird on a Branch screaming, Fat Penguin, Staring Eagle, Marvin Beak, Three Shapes of the Burb, and Wet Owl. Birds come in all sorts of shapes, sizes, and colors. So how do scientists categorize them and other creatures? Taxonomy is defined as the science of naming, describing, and classifying organisms. Carl Linnaeus is famously known as the father of taxonomy for developing a system of classification published in the blockbuster hit Systema Naturae. Today we have a hierarchy of mostly eight ranks. Picture it as an upside-down pyramid with the mighty domain at the tippy-top, the broadest category that rules over all. Then we gracefully descend through kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and finally, species, the most specific level of the bunch. Mostly eight ranks, though. Taxonomists can add the prefixes sub, super, and infra to these ranks, and throw in other intermediate ranks like brigade, cohort, section, and tribe for their own convenience. Linnaeus also created the binomial system in which every species is described with a capitalized genus name, followed by a lowercase specific epithet. Both parts are always italicized. Binomial nomenclature often uses ancient Greek and Latin roots, which are useful because they are dead languages with unchanging meanings. Meanwhile, common names vary around the world for the same species. Take the majestic Orchinus orca, for example. In English alone, it's known as the killer whale and the orca. These are its names in other languages. Zoology and botany each got their own secret handshake when it comes to citing the author of a taxon, or any unit used in the science of biological classification. In zoology, Linnaeus is simply referred to as Linnaeus. However, when Linnaeus enters the botanical stage, he's abbreviated to L. Ouch! Yes, you heard it right, folks. Every time Linnaeus is cited in a botanical name, he takes the L. Linnaeus' first child, Carl Linnaeus the Younger, is cited as the author of Dermatobia hominis, Linnaeus Jr., 1781, the human botfly. Grab your fly swatters because these unassuming flies have a terrifying life cycle straight out of a horror movie that will make your skin crawl and send shivers down your spine. It'll save the blood-curdling details for a separate video, though. Stay tuned. Now, I must confess, while flies certainly have their charm, I'm more of a beetle enthusiast myself. Coleopterology is a subdiscipline of zoology that studies beetles. Now, I may not be a certified coleopterist, but I like to believe I'm still somewhat sane. I mean, I haven't quite reached the point of begging I underscore fox or hisser dude to identify me yet. Although, who knows what the future holds? Maybe one day when I fully embrace my beetle obsession, I'll find myself crawling to the experts and pleading for their ID on all of my six legs. This individual seems to be another species because of its smaller size and distinctive dusty appearance. Jigatry found loads of both species in Balin's Park. It must have been like stumbling upon a full-blown beetle convention. I can just imagine the beetles mingling, sharing beetle stories, and dancing the night away. It's like Coachella for beetles, minus the flower crowns. 
Meanwhile, Jigatree also stumbled upon this little guy on a suburban sidewalk on July 5th. Unfortunately, the parasite seemed to be having a field day with getting the best of it and partying at its expense. Poor thing, it's definitely a separate species from the ones shown before. But what exactly defines a species? According to Oxford Reference, a biospecies is a group of interbreeding individuals that is isolated reproductively from all other groups. Evolutionary biologist Ernst Mayer suggested this idea, famously called the biological species concept. Species can be reproductively isolated by prezygotic or postzygotic barriers so that they don't get too cozy with other species. Prezygotic barriers ensure that the sperm and the egg from different species no never way, even meet. Boy. One example is temporal isolation, where separate species mate at different times of the year. It's like trying to make a reservation at a fancy restaurant, but showing up on the wrong night. Postzygotic barriers, on the other hand, come into play after fertilization. One example is hybrid inviability, which means the hybrid zygote fails to develop and see the light of day. Even if the hybrid manages to be born, it can be a genetic dead end. Mules can't pass their genes to their offspring and are an exemplar of hybrid sterility. But hey, they're still pretty amazing in their own right. But Mother Nature isn't one to stick to the script. Sometimes different species interbreed and produce fertile offspring. The Italian sparrow can thank its existence to the phenomenon of hybrid speciation, when hybridization forms a brand new species. The parental species, the house sparrow and the Spanish sparrow, must be strutting around, proudly claiming their revolutionary sparrow legacy. They've proven that the biological species concept doesn't always have the final say. The Collins English Dictionary defines an ecospecies as a biological species distinguished from its close relatives with which it can interbreed by its adaptations to its particular environment. Spanish sparrows prefer semi-open shrublands, while house sparrows have a soft spot for human-modified areas like towns and farmlands, making them synanthropic. Entomologists often encounter the concept of amorphous species, a group of biological organisms whose members differ from all other groups in some aspect of their form and structure, but are so similar among themselves that they are lumped together for the purposes of analysis. Take a look at these two mosquito fellas. Can you spot the differences? Tricky, right? Many insect species are virtually indistinguishable from each other, huh? like trying to tell identical twins apart. This is Anopheles mellus, and this is Anopheles maris. Under the morphological species concept, they would be considered conspecific or belonging to the same species. However, while they are closely related, they still belong to separate species, along with six others, forming a cryptic species complex, the Anopheles gambier complex. Cryptic species can be nearly impossible to tell apart morphologically, but form separate evolutionary branches in the tree of life. And a species complex is an informal assemblage of taxa whose members are related phylogenetically and share morphological similarities. They're twinsies connected through shared common ancestry and uncanny resemblance. Some interpretations of the etymology of the name Anopheles makes me wonder if German entomologist Johann Wilhelm Meigen had a crystal ball. The name comes from Greek and not, plus ophelos, benefit, which some people translated as harmful before Ronald Ross proved that some species in the genus were malaria vectors in 1897. So using morphospecies can underestimate biodiversity and overestimate at the same time. To some, Thomas Lincoln Casey Jr., not to be confused with his father, Thomas Lincoln Casey Sr., who was crucial in the construction of the Washington Monument, was a military engineer who installed mines during the Spanish-American War. To others, he was a prolific coleopterist. But to others still, he was a taxonomic menace, a splitter. I believe the National Center for Science Education perfectly defines what a splitter does, breaking up larger groups into smaller ones on the basis of tenuous differences. Cough, excuse me, folks. I seem to have caught a case of the taxonomic hiccup. Cough, cough, dandelions. Cough, cough, ah. Sorry about that. It seems my vocal cords got a bit tangled up with taxonomy. Happens to the best of us, I guess. Some species of the genus Coniontis have seasonal polymorphism, meaning they develop distinct forms at different times of the year. Unfortunately, Casey was oblivious to this fact and described the seasonal variations of each species as separate species, later pointed out by American entomologist Frank Ellsworth Blaisdell, senior whoopsie-daisy. 
Except it ain't the only time Colonel Casey crashed the Beatle party with his wrecking ball and spoiled all the dishes. In a revision of Dynastini scarabs, also known as rhinoceros beetles, of the United States, research associate Lawrence W. Saylor of the California Academy of Sciences both roasts and compliments Casey, noting, Casey's studies in this group have greatly enlarged our synonymy because of his practice of naming trifling variants. But at the same time, his memoirs, 1915, gave more detailed information and pointed out more new characters and relationships than had any of his predecessors or contemporaries, including Horn and Leconte. It is indeed too bad that Colonel Casey's idea of a species was not exactly that of the vast majority of coleopterists. But alas, Casey couldn't resist his wacky shenanigans. He got roasted by Sailor once again, this time for inflating the number of U.S. species in the genus Cyclocephala, stating, Casey described many variants, so that we have 39 names for what I consider to be only 10 valid species. Sorry, Casey, but that's what you get for ruining taxonomy. Get wrecked. Now let's take a little detour down memory lane. It's been a decade since I published the video, What is the Greatest Honor? And guess what? I finally have the answer. It's not installing mines or splitting taxa into oblivion. No, the greatest honor is having a beetle named after you. Even the Beatles themselves have a beetle named in their honor. Stephen Colbert, Barack Obama, Malala Yousafzai, Leonardo DiCaprio, Greta Thunberg, and Xi Jinping all have one commonality, making it into the prestigious Beatle Hall of Fame. Casey, while you might not have been the best at taxonomy, at least you have a lady beetle and a June beetle both probably named after you by Roswell Hill Johnson in 1910 and Blaisdell in 1930, respectively. So, to any taxonomists watching this video, I'd be honored if you named any species after the amazing YouTuber Gigatree, who poured more than a week's worth of dedication into this Vsauce parody script. It'll mean the world to this young, passionate beetle enthusiast and make his day. Dr. Kojin Kanda, whose email is coniantis at gmail.com, was working on a partial revision of coniantis for his PhD, but he ended up publishing phylogenetic studies of Tenebrionoidea, Tenebrionidae, and Pimelini instead. So, when is coniantis being revised? Never, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. And as always, thanks for watching.